Hey everybody, this is Josh, just popping in here at the beginning of the episode to let you know that we now have a Patreon. That's right, patreon.com slash yet. There you'll find a bunch of cool tiers that you can subscribe and help support the show with. Uh, some of the benefits include a shout out in every episode for your social media, small business, online store, whatever. Uh, we also have um, opportunities to join our Discord fan server and chat with the cast. Uh, we also have um, access to uh, full unedited um, sessions, so you can hear everything that we do over the course of the three to four hours that we record. Um, it's a lot of fun, so be sure to check that out. That's patreon.com slash are we dead yet? All right, let's get to the show. Sinister Secrets and Dark Truths mystical creatures and magical powers, dark dungeons and enlightened paths, all lead us to ask that one question as time marches onward. Are we dead yet? So you guys awaken really early. It's actually still dark outside a little bit, but you're well rested. Uh, maybe you guys had some nice snacks from, from Granny Goliath uh, the night before, but you're back in the city with the smells, the sounds, the atmosphere that you two are most comfortable in. Chester, you wake up, you look over, and your bag is sitting on the floor, full and bulging with all the goodies that you... Uh, managed to swipe out of the castle and from the the temple. It you have you have a few things as well from the temple, I believe. I think you have a necklace and some other stuff. I don't remember. You might have it written down though. So uh, I think actually, well, because my thing kept getting erased <laughs> every time I wrote oh. something down. Um, let's just assume I think that uh, I think John actually kept track of everything. So I, I do think I have all of our loot. So yeah, I okay. think I have some like that. food. I think I have cheese in my bag. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, all that cheese from the uh, yeah, totally. So you guys wake up. Um, did you guys share a room or separate rooms or what? Mm. Um, I mean, we should, we could, we probably would have shared a room. We probably Chester. yeah, we're small enough. I perched somewhere on, like, the little uprising or something. And Chester probably curled up on the most uncomfortable surface he could find. Oh, shit. So we didn't even use the bed? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, if you guys shared a room, then uh, we'll say that it was 150 total just for the room. So I, I already pulled that out on my end. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. Chester takes control of all the financial shit. I just. <laughs> That's a bad idea. You just swipe the shit. <laughs> Uh, I don't think I even swipe it. <laughs> Let's just say I'm going with the flow. You just run interference. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There we go. All right, so the first thing Chester wants to do is he wants to return the item he has stolen from Eberus covertly because he doesn't want anyone to know that he took it. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, you enter the hallway and you hear just this great big... Uh, dwarvish snoring coming from down the hall. Oh, exactly. Just sawing Who that is. <laughs> I, I won't make you roll a stealth check because okay. you're already light on your feet and right. he's dead to the world. Mostly because he's <laughs> not here, so, you know. <laughs> he's literally dead to the world <laughs> He's, right he's now. literally not here right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you enter so his I, room. Yeah, I'll, I'll ease his door open. Um... Chester's gonna pull out a little note he had written the night before, drunk on uh, drunk on milk, and uh, he's just gonna put it on. I'm assuming there's like a nightstand or a table next to the bed. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. He's just gonna just gonna set it there. Sure. Okay. What does it uh, say, John? Uh, it says it looks like you're one of the good ones. Sorry, friend. And then it has a little uh, paw print signature. Okay. I'm going to make a note of that real quick in... No, that was the uh, golden tongue, correct, Josh? Yes. Cool. Boom. That's gone. 
All right, Chester's going to leave uh, Abris's room and grab it, and we're going to uh, head to uh, a fence that I know, I'm assuming. Wait. Sure, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Let me grab a cookie first. The cookie's oh, like the size yeah. of my fucking face. I want one. <laughs> yeah. Go grab some go grab some breakfast for a healthy meal to sell some stolen goods. Yeah, Granny Goliath seems to just like always have fresh cookies out oh. on the counter. Um, Chester's going to grab a cookie, I guess, too. Uh, she's asleep, but, you know. Somehow. <laughs> somehow there's still cookies. Uh, you actually notice that, like, there are... Or, or No, actually, I'll say, uh, before she bedded you guys down last night, she did mention that she has several uh, spectral servants that uh, help her throughout the, uh. throughout the inn. Mm-hmm. So just don't don't pay them any mind. Don't worry, they won't hurt you. Basically, they're just a casting of Unseen Servant. Okay. So ghost chefs, yeah, hell yeah. So, so yeah. As you leave, uh, you see a, a broom kind of just in the air sweeping. <laughs> <laughs> as you head out into the early morning, early morning air, it's uh, it's kind of a chilly morning. It's cold and crisp. Chester, you're looking for a fence, um, and you're in District 53. You know of three of them that are either in District 53 or nearby. Okay. There's Moriarty. He is a strange, kind of creepy goblin that you've dealt with before. He runs a museum of oddities here in the district. And he pays for, like, he pays the highest prices for, like, oddball items, magic items, and jewels. Okay. There is Akira that's just a few districts over, over in District 48. Uh, she is a gray and black striped Felis. And you have a pretty good working relationship with her, except that she has a not too subtle crush on you. Oh, okay. <laughs> but she's useful because she has connections to the Clothia. She's not too picky about what she takes, but her prices are pretty standard for uh, what you'd get at like more reputable shops. Okay. And then there's Mesnel. He's a half elf who operates out of Motel 53, the public inn that you guys uh, skipped out on, which is probably a good good call. <laughs> <laughs> he'll take anything, but he's stingy with his prices. Okay. But you know that he'll literally take anything. You've sold him stuff before and He's kind of rude. He's kind of a rude boy. So, got it. Got it. All right. So, I think we're going to uh, pay Moriarty a visit and then we're going to go to my girl Akira after that. Oh. Okay. You want to hit up both? Yeah. Fuck yeah. Sure. You want to sell all of that shit. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. So, you guys come to uh, Moriarty's uh, oddities. It's a really kind of gothic looking museum uh, storefront. It's all black and it's got like these like wrought iron like uh, gargoyles and just you know the whole the whole Adams Family vibe kind of comes off of this <laughs> uh, this building here. Now have I have I worked with Moriarty before? I'll, I'll leave that up to you. Okay. Okay. And then is he connected with the Clothia at all or is he his own thing? He's not. He is his own his own private uh, private enterprise. So to speak. Got it. Got it. Okay. I, I will say, if you haven't worked with him before, you've at least heard rumors about kind of kind of what he's all about, what he's into. But he definitely has a reputation for being creepy. Okay. All right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna walk in. Yeah. Sure. Mm-hmm. The, the the two of you walk into uh, to Moriarty's museum. Right as you walk in, there are two bugbear stuffed bugbear like full full bodied bugbears stuffed which is very creepy considering they are also goblinoids so clearly moriarty has no qualms about you know taxidermying his fellow goblins or goblinoid creatures um <laughs> so you enter uh there's these two bugbears i don't know how you uh, react to that but i've been here a couple times before i, I knew they were there okay there's a desk. These these bugbears are like flanking a desk. There's no one standing there, but as you enter, a bell rings, and then just slowly rising up 
from behind the desk is this stout little goblin. He just says, uh, <laughs> Chester, Chester, come in, come in. <laughs> oh, did you bring me some goodies? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got, I, got a, I got a good pull this time, Moriarty. Oh, well, oh, and you brought your your good your good companion with you too. Oh, excellent! Why don't you just uh, come on to the back and we'll uh, we'll do business there. And we're gonna, or I'm gonna follow him to the back. Sure. He uh, he pops over to the front door real quick, flips the sign to say closed, locks the front door, and leads you to the back. <laughs> And he just says, uh, don't want anyone interrupting us during our uh, little exchange. <laughs> of course, of course. He leads you through the museum. You've been here before. He's got quite a bit of like random like necklaces and, and pieces of jewelry uh, sort of behind these like display glasses. He has this like dragon bone crown that has just like the biggest emerald in it that you've ever seen sitting there maybe you've thought about like hitting this place a couple times I've, i'm definitely thinking about it right now right <laughs> same i'm like mm, dragon crown but i don't know maybe you just haven't devoted the time to really scope out what kind of traps you might have here but if you'd like to make an investigation roll either of you to maybe yeah, you know, scope I'll, make it a, out. I'll make a little investigation roll while we're walking around sure um it do you want to make one as well or do you want to uh, assist my investigation? Yeah, I'll assist. That's a better. That's better since I am not good at investigation. <laughs> okay, sure. Whatever works. I got a fifteen. Uh, yeah. So with a fifteen, I'll give you that. Uh, as you're walking around, uh, you see several windows that lead into this place, and you can see several like trip wires, like kind of like carefully laid in along the edge of the windowsill where the window meets, where the window comes down. So there's definitely some sorts of uh, traps uh, set up in these rooms. That's what that's what I'll give you. All right, all right. Uh, yeah, but uh, as you're coming towards the back, you do see a new addition to the building or, or to the, the display case. Uh, you see sitting very delicately, almost like, like this like uh, small sphere that has a bunch of like uh, random holy symbols carved into it. And there's a big red button on the top. And the display case is labeled the Holy Hand Grenade of Trico. <gasps> <laughs> hey, uh, Moriarty. Yes. What's, uh, what's that thing do? Oh, oh, this is. This is my newest addition. You have a clever eye. <laughs> uh, yes, this uh, this little device, I've been told, uh, is something the Mages Guild has been after for quite some time. And I happened to acquire it through, well, <laughs> means that you are all too familiar with. Yeah, Moriarty, uh, just uh, unofficial from uh, one cat to another. You got a uh, you got beef with the Mages Guild? Uh, not particularly, but you know they they don't like my uh, particular form of collecting. <laughs> uh, what if I said I uh, I may got something that might interest you in terms of collecting from the Mages Guild? <laughs> oh, you know business is done in the back. Come on, my boy. We'll uh, we'll see what you got. <laughs> He kind of motions for you to come uh, behind a, a, this black curtained room. I'm going to follow. Sure. Uh, yeah, you both enter. This is a pretty bare bones room. It's just got three chairs and there's like a stack of chairs off to the side as well. And it's got just this wooden table um, and he just kind of motions for you. It, it's actually a, a smaller size table because of his size. and <laughs> But it's like normal because we're his size <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> uh so he just motions for you to kind of unload what you want uh, and uh, to, chester's to gonna him. go head first into his box or his bag he's going to pull out a uh the uh, box with the sapphire two small rubies two small sapphires and then one of his mages guild badges i'm gonna take out one of my cheeses from my bag 
<laughs> he uh, he looks at your cheese. It kind of looks at you, and he looks back at the cheese, and he says, "Is that meant to be a bribe to get on my good side?" I mean, cheese never hurt anybody. Do you want some? I mean, it works. And he kind of <laughs> just reaches out a hand and slowly slides the cheese over to his side. <laughs> uh, I'm going to give you a point of inspiration for that. Because that was yes! fun. Yes! <laughs> yeah! Cheese! <laughs> So, um, oh, anytime, man. anytime you want to roll with advantage or give someone advantage mm -hmm. or negate a disadvantage, just let me know. Okay. He kind of starts uh, thumbing through these items, kind of inspecting each of them. The rubies, he, you know, he kind of holds up to the light of the of the torches that are burning, and you know, checks to see their quality. He says. Well, <laughs> oh, you always do bring the most interesting stuff. Um, you can keep the box. I'll take the sapphire out of it, but the the, the box you can keep. Uh, for all this, I'd say I could probably easily part with about uh, 2,500. Uh, I mean, I'm sure with that Mage's Guild badge, you could... You could I don't even know the math to talk about the kind of profit you could get off that. <laughs> the Mage's Guild badge raised this by a thousand. I oh. I think I think you can go <laughs> at least three grand for everything. You always were a bargainer, weren't you? Uh, go ahead and roll some persuasion. Cats gotta eat, my friend. Milk ain't free. <laughs> what is my persuasion? That's not as good as I wanted it to be. Can I assist? Uh, give me a line and I'll let you. Oh, man. <laughs> well, Hang I on. got a seven, so you better think of a line. Or just, like, pull out another block of cheese. Yeah, okay, I'll do that. I'll, so I'll do a cheese and a little a little, a little little treat, like a little pastry this time. Or the cookie. <gasps> the rest <laughs> of my cookie. <laughs> okay, I'll, uh, I'll give the assist. I'll give the assist. That's fine. <laughs> Well, it didn't oh. help because I just got the exact <laughs> same fucking roll. Damn it, John! <laughs> <laughs> he looks at your half-eaten cookie and raises an eyebrow and is just like, not after you've eaten off of it. I'm not an animal. It just slides it more across the table. Just even more. <laughs> it pats the cookie, too, and just leaves it. <laughs> all, right, all right, all right, Moriarty. All right, all right. Twenty-seven fifty. Twenty-seven fifty. 2750. I know you're not going for the three grand. I, I could go twenty-seven fifty. We hey, are you're a real pal, man. You're a real friends. pal. Yeah, he disappears behind another curtain. You hear some chinking around, some safes opening. You hear a random like uh, scream that is obviously like a magic mouth spell that he accidentally set off, and you just hear him say, <laughs> ah, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> After a little while, he, he walks out uh, holding a, just a big old bag of gold and says, uh, it's all there, but you're welcome to count it here if you wish, you know. Hey, I trust you, Moriarty. It's good doing business with you again. Of course, come back if you ever have anything. And he picks up the badge and just starts rubbing it like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I still have one of those badges. I'm very excited about that. Yeah. If I ever probably need it. save it for us. Oh, man. This, this, oh, yeah, opens I'm saving up, it. this opens up so many opportunities. Yeah. Did either of you find anything you want to buy right away? No, I looked through it. And I don't I don't think so. But I need to read what most of them do. So. Oh, sure. Sorry. I have links. No, you're good. Oh, sorry. For some reason, it didn't pop up for me. Like, it didn't do a highlighted notification. I kind of want those sunglasses, though. Dark vision's nice. Oh, it's charges, though. Not just sunglasses that give you dark vision. Darn you, Josh. Well, it's the dark vision spell, which allows you to see through magical darkness, right? Or was I thinking of something else? No, I think you're thinking of something else. Okay, I'm probably thinking of true sight then, aren't I? 
Uh, no, I think you're thinking of the uh, Warlock version. Is that what I'm thinking? Oh, I'm thinking Devil's Sight. There's no bag of holding. I'm disappointed. There isn't. Did I not put that on there? You did not. You Are, put were you bag going of tricks. To? No, there's supposed to be a bag of holding on there. Fuck yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> How much is the bag of holding, Josh? Shit. Fuck. <laughs> I hate when my notes don't save properly. It's all good, dude. Um, I'll say a bag of holding is, uh, for two of them, we'll say 350 each. Oh, shit. So 700 fun. gold? Okay. So, Zoe, add a bag of holding to your inventory. Okay, but we just want one, right? No, we each have one. Why do we each have one? Because we both need one. Or we should, but, well, plus, that's that's twice the carrying space. That's true. I can true. steal twice the stuff now. That's true, and you can just put it on mine. Okay. All right. Cool. All right, and now we're heading to uh, Akira. Okay. I just realized what it was, by the way. It's like the bouncer. Like, he's like yeah. the muscle. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> I mean, that's true. You're dealing out, like, what? Like, 30 damage a turn on average or the, something? The like... way I, I kind of see us is we're, like, we're childhood friends, right? We met on the street. Mm-hmm. I'm the I'm the dumb guy who always got in trouble. And you. it's not like... It, it's not like you're protecting me, but you always just kind of feel like responsible for getting me out of trouble because you know I, I don't know better and can't do better. <laughs> <laughs> can't do better or won't do better? Uh, it doesn't know how to do better. We'll go with that. <laughs> cool. Yeah, so uh, the journey to District 48 is not too not too bad. You're actually able to kind of catch an early morning uh, little trolley that doesn't have anyone else on it. Just the just a little uh a little gnome uh riding a a team of horses through through town almost looks like he really can't handle the two horses that are pulling his wagon <laughs> along but he he he's trying his best every once in a while you'll hear a little Ooh. from the from the front of the from the front of the the trolley <laughs> um, but you guys arrive in uh, District 48. Uh, you know that Akira operates out of a little little hole in the wall pub called the Whistler's Whirlpool, and it's known for just kind of being built around like this really ornate fountain. Like literally, the building was built around a fountain, so it's added kind of like this weird, like uh, almost underground cave type ambience uh, to the pub. Okay. So it it so it always kind of just sounds like there's like rushing water going on uh, inside inside this pub, and Akira finds that it helps keep eavesdroppers from nosing in on her conversations. And it makes it hard to makes it hard to hear. Exactly. So I, I want to make a note uh, before going in. Chester's gonna pause and take a second to groom himself. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, it. You see, Chester just like hold up a paw and starts, you know, licking himself. Um, how do you react to this? It's gonna start patting down their hair because they think they have to go. They have to be ready to you for something. <laughs> <laughs> so it's gonna, or I guess feather, not hair. So it's gonna start like also grooming too with its beak. Sure, sure. So you. Maybe, maybe you guys have just been to Akira so much that this is just like your ritual before going in. Like I say, Ches- Chester Chester knows that if he if he goes in looking groomed and puts the moves on, he he gets a couple couple extra gold pieces out of this transaction. I think it just doesn't really know what's going on, but it's just following suit because <laughs> Chester is doing it. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Yeah, you get you get looking pretty, prettied up a little bit, and you uh, you come in. There's Akira laying on the bar, kind of just slowly lapping at a little uh, saucer of milk. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, I thought she was like passed out for a second. I was like, this is the lady you chose. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> L- lapping at a, at a saucer of milk while a couple tabaxi are behind the bar, kind of cleaning cleaning some some glasses a little bit chester you know from experience that while they may look like simple bartenders they are actually her muscle okay okay she just looks up and says oh my my favorite kitty kitty hello uh uh greetings akira oh i love when you roll your r's like that 
have you come to play or for business? Uh, it's business today. Oh, well, that's a shame, but I understand. Come, come, come. And she beckons you over to her, to her spot. I'm gonna walk over. Oh, and and you brought your little, your little friend as well. Oh, hello, it. You look fabulous today. Oh, thank you. And it waves back and hops up onto the stool by the bar and orders a drink. Uh, sure, yeah. One of the tabaxi starts uh, starts pouring some stuff. What do you? Uh, what's your poison? Juice. <laughs> Juice. <laughs> <laughs> Totally, totally. <laughs> yeah, you've been here enough. Yeah, he, he pours you a nice glass of OJ and uh, <laughs> just kind of slides it over and just says, uh, on the house as uh, friends of our of our mistress. Yeah, it doesn't really know what's going on. They, actually, he doesn't, they don't get the sexual tension, I guess. So they're just like, <laughs> always thought they just have to look nice, follow whatever Chester does before. <laughs> Chillin. <laughs> this makes it so much better. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> she she takes your paw in hers and starts stroking it. She says, So what did you what did you bring me today? And uh Chester's gonna with his other paw reach into his bag, he's gonna start pulling out uh two decorative gold holy symbols two small ivory statues of a man and a woman, a uh, book of prayer, some shoes, and a uh, golden compass. So her eyes go wide when you bring out the gold holy symbols and the golden compass and the ivory statues. When you bring out the prayer book and the shoes, (laughs) she stops stroking your paw. And uh, Chester's going to immediately pick up on this and start stuffing those back in his bag. Okay. She says, oh, oh, I thought you were, thought you were trying to insult me with those shoes for a minute. And uh, Chester's going to go, oh, of, of course not. Uh, I, I thought there was something shiny underneath them, but there isn't. Oh, well, no matter. Oh, these, uh, these little gold symbols and statues they uh they look like they might belong to a holy person you wouldn't you wouldn't be stealing from the churches would you i no living members of the churches were stolen from well that's all that matters then doesn't it chester uh begins seductively licking his paw and looking at her out of the corner of his eyes she's going to uh she's going to say Oh, Chester, you know I've always liked you. I could probably take all this off your hands for, oh, maybe a thousand, twelve hundred if you, uh, if you come by for a drink later tonight. How about, uh, fifteen and you've got me for an hour in the back room? Oh, jeez. <laughs> Chester's trying to get that get that gold dude uh she she holds her paw to her chest kind of feigning like you know oh me uh and she says now chester i am no woman of the night but uh i uh i could make use of you for an hour i suppose come come back tonight and i will uh i'll make sure that the bar is closed out and we can have our own private talk. Our own private time. She snaps her fingers and one of the tabaxi just kind of lifts a bag of gold up and sets it on the table and slides it towards you. All right, Chester's going to slide the bag in his backpack and uh, grab it and get going. Um, it. Uh, you finish your juice up and the tabaxi that served you kind of looks at you and says... Uh, you want another another glass, or you good? And it's gonna turn to Chester and be like, "So, uh, how much longer do we have?" Uh, we're 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 done for now. I I gotta come back later, but you don't gotta come with me. Uh, it was it was great doing business with you, Akira, and uh, I'll see you tonight. Wink. 
I look forward to it. And she goes back to licking her, uh, licking her milk. It's gonna just wave goodbye to Kira, like nothing's going on, no <laughs> naughty business. <laughs> uh, sure. And you come back out. It's probably getting to be about lunchtime at this point during the day. Is there anything else? I haven't really been keeping too much track of your gold, but you have a good pretty penny now. So, uh, I don't know what you have individually, but our pool of stolen stuff is 7765 right now. And then I have an additional 600 of gold, and I think that's what we were paid for uh, doing the um, clearing out the uh, sewers and stuff. Yeah, you and it got uh, got shorted by yeah by Sergeant Rain. Yep, mm-hmm. because of some past uh, naughty business. It's just I think it's just because we're generally criminals and they don't like us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If anything, I think we're actual criminals. So <laughs> I we are actual. I, we just committed, you know, the sale Criminal. of stolen goods. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you guys have a, a pretty penny still uh, floating around. Oh, almost, yeah. almost ten G's. Woo-woo! Almost. We're close. Like I said, it's about midday, uh, lunchtime. There's quite a few people uh, kind of milling about uh, in the street, doing business, moving, you know, bales of whatever, setting up carts for, you know, selling stuff, whatever. Chester and it, though, you notice that as you kind of mix in with the crowd, that there are two robed figures wearing badges uh, of the mages guild that are following you. Oh. Hmm. Are the robes like the cultists robes or are they the mages guild robes? They're definitely mages guild robes. Okay. Uh, there are these nice flashy like blue robes with like little stars all over them. Okay. These guys Hang make on. themselves known. Yeah. So I think I think we're gonna try to lose them. We're gonna we're gonna take some weird turns just to just to make sure they're following us and not just coincidentally going to the same place. Can I cast pass without a trace? I don't know quite how it works, but um, that basically gives us plus ten to stealth. Yeah. So that's actually not a bad idea. We can uh, we can yeah. you know take some sharp corners and then hide from them. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'll cast Pass Without a Trace as, just for that bonus bonus. Sure. What level spell is that? Second level. Okay. Second level Abjuration. It, you go to cast Pass Without a Trace and from the corner, like your peripheral vision, you see one of those robed figures raise their hand and they basically just kind of like almost look like they're like deflecting something out of the air. And suddenly you notice that the spell doesn't cast. Because oh, they fuck. have just cast Counterspell. Damn it, stupid people. Mm. And uh, and Chester, uh, you get a message in your head that says, We've been sent by the head of the Mages Guild to ask you for help. Could you please come with us and not make too much of a fuss? And uh, Chester's just going to stop in his tracks and turn around go oh, what, what do you want um our our the head of our order has said that you may be aware of some intrigue going on in the city and oh crap it was that oh who's that guy we found in the sewers it, it, that's his fault he was part of the mages guild now he's getting me all wrapped up in this Yes, Artie. Yes, Artie. Artie reported your whole, your whole tale to the head of our order, and she has need of your skills. I'm sure there are some lucrative rewards available. If you'd only follow us to our headquarters. Well, it it looks like we're going on another adventure. Okay, let's go, but uh. But, uh, who's Artie again? Oh, uh, he's that asshole we found in the sewers. In the statues. 
You remember? Oh, 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 oh right, with that yeah, other dude. Yeah, oh, that guy. yeah, that oh, guy. Oh, right, right, right. Okay, okay, okay. And then they just, like, bailed before all the big monsters came. Yeah. Right, okay, okay. And then yeah. they're, oh, we're supposed to send backup. No backup ever came. We had to fight everything off ourselves. Yeah, I know. Almost died. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess right. we should go. <laughs> yep. They, they beckon you over, and the one who's remained silent this whole time claps his hands together puts his hands out and a gate a, a, a portal opens up that looks like on the other side leads into like some sort of like really well maintained like office building hey uh I uh I do a little bit of magic here and there um can you teach me how to do that ah in, in time in time we can teach you that yes but it takes diligence and he starts like lecturing you as he like beckons you into the portal <laughs> <laughs> thank you for listening to our show for more content including world maps cast info or additional podcasts check out our website oneuppodcasts.com be sure to follow us on twitter at are we dead yet pod and on facebook at facebook.com slash are we dead yet podcast intro and outro music composed by salty dog company Find them on SoundCloud by searching for Salty Dog Co. Spell dog, D-A-W-G. Background music and ambience provided by TabletopAudio.com under an attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives, 4.0 international license from Creative Commons. TabletopAudio.com really brings your games to life and is perfect for both adding in that background music to a podcast or for live sounds during gameplay to increase immersion. Check them out at tabletopaudio.com. The song during the scenes with Akira was Night in Venice by Kevin MacLeod, provided under an attribution 4.0 international license from Creative Commons. Cover art by Ashley Steinke. We'll be back in two weeks with another episode of the show. Bye.